everybody and welcome to the Horror Hangout, a podcast where we talk about the, the best and worst horror films of all time with horror fans from all over the world. Today, a very special episode. I'm talking to writer, director John McPhail um, about his upcoming film, Dear David. Hey, John, thanks for joining us today. Hey, dude, how are you doing? Thanks for having me. Ah, really good, thank you. Um, before we get into Dear David, which um, I've been lucky enough to get to watch already and talk about how much I enjoyed this, I couldn't let it pass by without talking about the first film that I certainly knew you from. Um, Certainly my favourite Christmas horror musical of all time. (laughs) Anna and the Apocalypse. Um, What brought, you know, how how did that begin for you? Where where did that come from? Are you a musical fan? Not me. Like, see, before, like, I made that movie, if you'd have been, if you'd have been like, John, we're going to a musical tonight, you'd have been dragging me, kicking and screaming. Like, (laughs) like, it's just usually not my bag. But um, like South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut's my favorite musical. Um, but uh, like when I got into like got into like sort of like um, like the, the script came to me um, to pitch for, and I just loved the the kids. It was the teenagers, like regardless of all the spectacle and the fun and everything else. I just loved the kids and and their journey, and 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 that's always what attracts me. A project is character, and and um, I, I just loved it. And you know, I started doing like loads of research on like what watching loads and loads of musicals, and there was stuff like oh, I love the Rocky Horror Picture Show, like you know, um, a uh, little shop of horrors, like those kind of things. And like Takeshi Miki's like one of my favorite directors, so like Happiness of the Kakatauris, like you know, like I love it. Like, um, so um, and and when I started sort of looking into musicals, I was like, hold on a minute, I'll actually get let I get to have the characters like stop and tell the entire audience. This is how I feel right now. <laughs> Listen to my inner monologue. I was like, "This is perfect. This is great. This is going to hook people right in." Like, um, so yeah, um, so yeah, that that's how that all started. Um, and then looking at the dates, then so while Anna and the Apocalypse was coming out, like back in twenty seventeen, if, if my chronology is not mixed up, this is when the real life events that inspired this film that we're talking about today began to unfold, right? Yeah, this is but it was all happening. Like it was uh hi. So was, the, uh, the, we've got the little little blurb here, so we'll I'll read through it here. So Dear David, the your new upcoming film will talk dates in a little while. So it begins with the story of um Adam, um, who's responding to internet trolls out on social media, begins to uh, how he's beginning to experience in sleep paralysis, an empty rocking chair moving in his apartment, and it's inspired by the going viral as a Going Viral is a Nightmare, the series of tweets that happened back in 2017 from artist Adam Ellis, right? So um, so when this was happening, when your when your last film was, you know, just out and people were watching it, were you following the the thread as it unfolded? Yeah, so, like, I, 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 I didn't find it on Twitter or anything. It was on, like, one of those, like, um, you know, clickbait articles, <laughs> like, you know, the scariest thing on the internet, and I'm like, click. Um, <laughs> Got so, him. <laughs> I, I and like I, I I suffer from sleep psychosis myself and like um uh, the character of Adam Ellis like he just kind of like like he's really funny like I like these comics and stuff like I'm a big comic book nerd so like you know like little panels and stuff like I love Garfield like you know just those little panels um and uh, and and he was just so funny and sarcastic and it just didn't feel like the story that this guy would tell and like you know you know this horror story you know what I mean like so I kind of hooked me in even more um. Yeah, yeah. And, and you mentioned the you know not only the comics but the comedy. Obviously, your film history. It feels like even when you're tackling, you know, some quite dark and sinister goings on, you always like to have a little bit of a touch of comedy to it as well. I think nice, sharp, dark, sharp dialogue. You know, people like to have a laugh even in these, you know, dire situations, be it zombies or internet trolls and ghosts. Man, some of the the darkest times in my entire like life. Have always always ended up with me laughing, like do you know what I mean, like 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 as in like that as in that, like it's as and sometimes it's the hardest laughter I've ever had, like I've you know like like I you know it's just like 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 how we, like we are as a family and mom and my friends and things like that. We've got quite a dark sense of humor, um and you know like co- like laughter's always helped me through things, um and I always feel like just the comedy just always complements horror really well to sort of as I say to hook you in with some characters and. Um, and, and sort of lighten the tension in places and and then when you lose comedy when you've you've had it in, in, in places like particularly like the third act like for Anna like you know you really took that the, the, the horror out of that and so that that third act could just stand as a proper horror but 
you know, you miss it, you crave it again. If that makes sense. Yeah, it kind of gives you like a bit of, you kind of have to have some hope to lose, right? And a little bit of levity and a little bit of connection to these characters. Because if everyone's in a dirge of misery from the very beginning, you don't want death to be a release, right? You want it to be something worth holding on to. And, and Adam is like, you know, he's in your face. Like the real even Adam Ellis himself, like, like, I mean, like he just bats off trolls like nothing, like on Twitter. You know what I mean, like, the, 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 you know, but like he um, himself, he is. He's in your face and and really funny and sarcastic. So like watching that type of protagonist in this type of you know on, on a horror movie for me it was it was quite a, a fun um, undertaking. Like I really liked this. That's what hooked me in and, and you know what I really wanted to sort of um, focus in on. And you mentioned working with Adam and, you know, how he is in real life as well. There, I guess there's an extra dimension to this one. You know, you're not working with a script and a writer. You've kind of got this real life element that became a screenplay and a script that then comes to you as a director to, you know, to, you know, to pad out and make into an entire film as well. So bearing in mind, it was some of Adam's lived experiences and the original story that he told and the reaction that got to it. How involved was he in, in the process with you? Um, I mean, not 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 much. Like, I, I, we connected when I went into pre production, um, and it was so that I could get like I wanted to know what kind of bands he liked and movies he liked, and like you know I wanted pictures of his apartment um, or apartments so that I could. This is an existing IP. There's already fans of this, and the, like a, a story we're taking a bit of dramatic license where <laughs> you know what I mean. So um, you I wanted I wanted to and I knew that I was going to upset some people, but what I could do was give you certain things. Like it would have been so easy just to use one cap, but we got the we we determined to have the two. Like yeah. you know, like certain parts of the furniture of the house, the, the apartments, the the color of the walls. Like you know, like there was a lot of that. Like his um uh, costume as well. Like you know, we went back to two thousand seventeen, finding the bags he wore, like t shirts, jumpers, hoodies. You know, so that you know that we could um you know bring in that audience that you know Adam Ellis fans and fans of Dear David because I know I'm going I'm going to disappoint some folk with you know because it's not going to be exactly like the Twitter thread but I can give them other things and you know little things that you know make them feel like part of the story and no I know I knew that or like oh I know that t-shirt or he's wearing it he loves that he does love Kate Bush and that's a Kate Bush do you know what I mean like you know so you're serving sort of, the people that were really into the the original story and that know him as an individual as well right so you're getting those hooks into it and then I have to say when I was when I was watching through I think there's a great number of great horror influences that come into and we'll do no spoilers here but some of the the set pieces and the scares that you build up. I was watching feeling maybe I've been watching too much of it recently, but there are elements, especially with how technology is inevitably involved and the corruption of that technology that people turn to for comfort and for their connection to the outside world, almost elements of, you know, like your classic J horrors coming into there of how, you know, how those things are taken away and how they are distorted. Um, So I think you've done a, wonderful job if I must say of like bringing in those elements to expand it from let's face it what was a really contained story as part of a twitter thread you know an entire new type of media and way to people to absorb storytelling in just the last few years in fact as these became huge platforms um but putting in those other cinematic elements to it as well I think it really gives a a bigger picture overall for a lot a broader audience to engage with because I'm sure there are people that will get to come and see this film that they don't scroll as much as uh, as much as some of us do and look at these things through other platforms but for you as a filmmaker seeing these things that are influencing storytelling now like you know media's burning through the classic novels and everything like that I mean how have you and filmmakers like you do you feel have been influenced by stories we're getting from these other media platforms now do you think it's still a rich I think rich it, resource I, I think I, I, well like I just think storytelling is always going to evolve, uh, like and, and change. You think about like from probably we started from like a short story to like poems and then novels and comic books and movies and you know podcasts are are like you know um, the, the uh, audio books. You know like these 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 are all these different like like methods of storytelling that you know that you know we we just keep on churning out and developing and. And like as as long as like the people are telling stories, like like no matter what medium it is, I think we were always going to sort of like connect to it and be drawn to it, and yeah, you know, I look forward to see what what's around the corner for it. You know, like even like things like VR and like you know three D, yeah. 
you know, it's all craziness. Like, you know, when you were a kid, remember what VR was? It was like red and black Game Boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Red and black Game Boy. Or, or tennis. Or like, you know. Craig Charles with like a big giant thing that you could put on your head in a Channel 4 <laughs> studio. Oh, you know what I mean? Time. Like, like, you know, um, uh, VHS. Uh, so like, you know, and we'll always continue to, we'll always continue to develop and change. And as long as people embrace it and sort of, in, uh, as I said, as, and as long as we're still telling stories through it, and yeah, that's the, that's the important thing. So obviously, Dear David is uh, an upcoming film. Um, what can we tell people? Where should they be watching out for it in terms of dates, places? Are we be going for cinemas? So what's what, where are people going to be able to catch it? It's going in. It's it's, it's in theaters and uh, on digital and on demand. Um, 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 from Friday the thirteenth of October. So coming Ooh. right up, perfect timing. <laughs> it's great. Oh, amazing! So people will be able to catch it wherever they are in the world. Check your local listings. We will add some things to the show notes, and we'll obviously retweet the things when they come up as well. Um, so yeah, people can certainly catch them there. John, my last two questions for you are. Obviously, we've got to get this one out and in people's eyes first. But what's next for you after that? Anything on the horizon? I love a whole, a whole bunch of sort of films just, just sort of sitting there. I listed like the strikes and the the writer strike, the writer strikes and the um, the actor strikes have put out a wee stop to a couple of things. Um, you know, like a lot of the writers, you know, I work with quite integrity with the, the film, and you know, we wanted to respect respect them for doing the other strikes and things. Um, but I, I am shooting a film here in uh, in Scotland, uh, prepping in January, shooting in March. It's a, a family film for uh, for Sky Cinema. Um, I know it's going to be a lot of fun. Perfect, best place to film as well. Um, oh, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But best scenery. What what can't you film here? Um, so, and then the final one. Obviously, we do a podcast called the Horror Hangout. You as a guy, if you've got your friends coming round, they ask you, John, we're going to come round and watch a horror movie tonight. What are you picking? It's on you. Oh, like, well, hold on, hold on, right? What, what kind of horror movie are we talking uh, about? Let's like, say horror film. It's going to be Alien. But if we're if it's, if it's the maids, we're having some beers, and you know, we want to have a it. bit of fun. We want to have fun it. with it. Yeah, oh, Halloween three, like oh. <laughs> the witch, like Halloween three, season of the witch. Yeah, perfect, 100%. perfect. What a choice, John. Thank you so much for your time today. Where's the best place people can follow you if they want to catch up? I know social media is not what it used to be. No, I, I bailed on Twitter like last year. I was like, nope, 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 <laughs> nope, nope. Um, like I, I, um, I, I, I like. I'm mostly sort of like private on like things like that, but I'm I'm on like Instagram and things. So perfect. We'll find it there and we'll obviously put the the film's social pages on there so people can follow it as well. Thank you, John, very much. I will let you get to your Friday evening and um go and catch Dear David, cinemas streaming wherever you can, coming very soon. <laughs>